study online we bless the holy name of god the god we are serving is a mighty god and this god is going to work his wonders Amen. and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of jesus we are so glad and so happy you are able to join with us and we know that god will do a great work and a mighty work even in every life and destiny in jesus so welcome to bible study online my name is chris pastor chris of body Pastor center and i'm here my wife pastor from prayer god bless you good evening thank you so much for joining us this hour and you the mighty God, eternal God, will touch every life. You are welcome to Bible study. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the day, this is the hour that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much for joining. God bless you. We are all blessed and highly favored. This is interactive Bible study where we study to show ourselves a proof of God. So you are now watching by accident or by divine appointment. I want you to invite all your friends, yes. you know, all your well wishers, everyone you know out there. Let's invite them. As you know, we are on two platforms. As you can now see on the screen, we are on Facebook. That is our Facebook digits, as you can see on the screen. Please, if you are watching via Facebook, share on your timeline, share with the groups you belong to, and share um, share share on your timeline also and will bless in example prosper in Jesus name and also share you can share on WhatsApp on Instagram and on Messenger and God will bless you and also we are also on YouTube the other part we are on please if you are watching us via YouTube please 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 and um, let your friends know those who must reply to and reply to you and let's all watch together and also every social media platform you may be on let's share on it and God will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome everyone. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining this broadcast. We pray the Lord will bless every life and your life is going to be the same. Please invite your friends, share the program, get your Bibles, get your writing pad, and God will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. You are not watching by asking them by divine appointment and the Lord will divine locate you right mm -hmm. where you are. You know this Bible study and it's a great package. We have praise and worship, we have prayers, we have studying the word, we have question time. We have where we read the word of God, you know, and many other things. So join us. I tell you, your life shall never remain the same again. Invite all your friends and family, and God will bless you. And I know that we will have exciting questions today. Amen. Oh, so get your questions ready. And you know what? The Lord will touch you like never before in the name of Jesus. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much. Please keep sharing, keep sharing. And God will bless every one of us, even like never before. In Jesus' name, are you ready for Bible study? Get ready. The Bible study is interactive. We are all discussing the Bible together. And God will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Bless you. Hallelujah. We give all the praise, glory, honor. Marvelous King, Acts of our Thank you. Amen. There's none that come to you. There's none besides you. There's none that compare unto you. You are the great God. You are the Eshadah. You are the Giovanni Sin. You are the Master. You are the Lord. You are the Savior. Marvelous King, we bless and worship you. We bless and adore you. I cut our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Every sin not forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Power to our miss Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Ghost, come down with your fire, Amen. power, your grace, your glory. Do a new work, my Father. I shall die. Do a new work, touch like before we bind every power of the enemy in the air, in the sky, in the moon, in the sea, and the water. We bind them, we cut them to hell in the mountains. Amen. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Holy Ghost, have your way. Amen. We come against every wounded spirit. Every divine spirit, yes. every distracted spirit, every spirit that is what God in people's hearts, we come against them. Every spirit that divides the mind, and the Father, every spirit that makes the mind wonder, we come against them, we bind them, we cast them to hell in the name of Jesus. Amen. We cover our minds, our hearts, our thinking process, our thought process, our conscious and our conscious part of our bodies, we cover it with the blood of Jesus. Yeah. We cover our brains with the blood of Jesus. Manifest. No demon, no power shall intercept that which you want us to hear today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have your way, O God, and bless us. Meet us at the very point of our need. Let your word transform, change, and Amen. lift us up. Thank you that we bless you. Amen. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Welcome everyone in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. May the Lord will bless everyone in Jesus' name. Invite, invite, invite. As you know, that is our uh, the platform, the, the two platforms are on Facebook and YouTube. So please, whichever you are watching us from, make sure you invite, <coughs> invite, invite your friends. Let's all come and watch. And I believe that the Lord will bless and and prosper everyone mightily and marvelously. And the name of God shall be glorified even in our lives Amen. and destinies in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Beloved of God, let's all go before God and begin to magnify and glorify God. The psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, yes. and all that is within me, bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let's begin to thank him in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name, we worship you, we adore you, we magnify you, we glorify you. Hallowed be your name. You are the living God. You are the awesome God. You are the great God. You are the eternal God. There is no one like you, and no one will be like you. We worship you, we adore you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Hallowed be your name, O God. Manta Kora Bagarish Kadana Rabosa, Taya Rabosa. Jesus mighty name, we pray. Let's thank God again for his faithfulness. Because today, again, the Lord will touch us even with His word. Say, Lord, I thank you, O God, because today He will touch me with your word. Let's begin to pray in Jesus' Father, name. Father, I thank you, O God, because I know He will Amen. touch me with your word. I give you praise, I give you glory. Hallowed be your name. Manta Kora Mashindana Makindana Mosindana Mokoria. Hallowed be your name. We thank you, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's go before God and say, Father, any sin, Baptist, if we regard any pity, the Lord will not hear us. It says, if we confess our sins, it's going to just forgive us and to, us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Say, Father, wash me clean tonight, oh God. Let's begin to pray. Father, we'll pray tonight, oh God. Have a sin of God, the blood of thee, the cleanses. Let the blood of just begin to cleanse us, oh God. I don't want my sins to hinder me tonight. Sins of word, of carelessness, of whatever it is, oh God. Hand it up, words of thoughts of thee. Father, wash me clean. Make me, oh, did me your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says, it's not him that we left, nor him that runneth, but God has showed mercy. Say, God of mercy, have mercy upon me tonight. Let's begin to cry out to God. Father Jehovah, you are the God of mercy. Have mercy upon me. Man, the boy, the sin, the cow, the sin. Father, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Let your mercy prevail even right now in the name of Jesus. I ask for your mercy tonight, oh God. Man, the Lord of God, shut up. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's say, God, Spirit of the living God, touch me tonight. I ask for more of you and none of myself. The Bible, once has spoken twice, have I had him more power belongs unto our God. Say, power of the Holy Ghost, touch me tonight. Let's begin to pray. Father, I pray tonight. Power of the Holy Ghost, touch me tonight. Touch me tonight. Touch me tonight. Man, Tarabo, Shiki, and Danamo have come to have an encounter with you. Spirit of the living God, breathe upon me, O God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say, Lord, breathe upon me, O God. I need your breath. I need your touch. I don't want to come in vain. Let's begin to pray. Spirit of the living God, breathe upon me, O God. 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 Breathe Let's begin to cry out to God. Father Jehovah, Mary, God will break your hand. Have a territory as in heaven, control the spirit. They come against you, we rebuke you right now. Hand your cat to body and the book of Taya. We pray the blood of Jesus. Have your way, oh God. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Father, we exalt your name one more time. Accept our thanksgiving spirit of a living God. Take your rightful place. To that which man cannot do by you and none can do. Be lifted up, oh God, and the glory will be yours. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen. Once again, you are welcome to Bible study online. Amen. Bible study. We bless God. The God of Sam is a mighty God. And this God is going to work his wonders mm -hmm. and miracles even in every life. Don't forget to invite your friends and God will bless you right now. We are going to praise and worship, to praise and worship to God in the beautiful holiness. And I tell you, your lives and lives shall never remain the same again. Amen. Let's join and worship God together. And I tell you, we'll see you after the praise and worship and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. Said I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing no matter, no matter what I have to do, cause I need, cause you. I need you more and more. Said I'm chasing after I'm you. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, cause I need, cause you. I need
worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be magnified. Let's begin to exalt him in the name of the Lord. Father Jehovah, we thank you. We worship you. We adore you. We honor you, O God. You are the Lord. You are the Master. Bless you. We worship you. We adore you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's go before God and say, Father, as I hear your word this hour, let your word touch my life, O oh God. Let your word breathe upon me. Let me encounter the power that is in the word. Let's begin to pray in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, O God, as we hear your word. Let the word of God touch our lives this hour, O oh God. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen. Say, let your word renew me, O oh God. Let there be a renewal. Let's begin to pray. Lord, I pray, O oh God, let your word renew me. Let there be a renewal. In the name of Jesus. Handa kariska daya la bosha, taya la dosha. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen. As we pray and tell God that Lord, use your word tonight to transform my life. Father, you have asked for transformation power to touch my life, to touch my destiny. Transform, 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 transform. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let your word, mighty Father, remove all what is not of your will in my life. As I hear your word, let it be removed from my life. Let's begin to pray. Father, you have a word of God in my life. Oh Lord, remove by fire. Be removed by fire. Be removed by fire. Father, forge me, oh God, and prune me, oh God. Change me, oh God. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let your word I will hear tonight, mighty Father. Give me a determination to be to live a holy life for you. Let's begin to pray the Father, Jehovah, I cry out to you to live a life that is pleasing unto you. A holy life, man, that power of shame, the fear of the sign Let me live a holy life. Let me have the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says he sent for this word and he healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Let your word heal me tonight, oh God. Let's begin to cry out to God. I pray tonight. Let your word heal me. I've got the healing power of God to touch my life. The power that is in the world. Heal me, God is on my spirit. Jesus, we will pray. Now send your word to me tonight. I will not be an unlook, I will be a partaker. I will not come in vain. Send your word to me tonight, Jehovah God. Let's begin to cry out to God. Mata, come and call the sinner. Father, send your word to me tonight, O God. I will not be a partaker, O God. I don't want to be an onlooker. Holy Ghost, Marabo, Supari, and Adam. Let your word locate me, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. He sent for this word and he healed them and delivered them. Let your word deliver me tonight. The power that is in the world. Deliver me totally tonight. Let's begin to pray. Father, I pray, oh God, mighty God, the word that we hear tonight. Let your word deliver, deliver. Set me free from every country, from every bondage, from every joke of hell. In the name of Jesus, Makatoria the Sinta. Amen. Matter of fact, let your word I will hear to that give me direction. Matter of fact, let your word give me direction. Begin to pray the Matthews. Father, let your word I will hear. Direct my path, O Lord. Give me direction. Oh Lord, direct my path. What I need to do. Let your word direct my path. Let your word begin to direct me. Matter of fact, give me direction. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Mm -hmm. Let your word I will hear tonight deliver me from the stronghold of flesh. Begin to pray and tell God. Holy my Father, Spirit, I come to you. deliver let me your from Lord, myself. Father, deliver me from my that. flesh. Let your let word, word I hear tonight deliver me from the stronghold of flesh. I don't want to succumb on that flesh. I don't want to do the will of flesh. I want to do your will, Lord. Let your word I hear tonight. Father, deliver me from the flesh. Breathe on me, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let your word I will hear tonight. Mighty Father, I should have spiritually take me to the next level. Let's begin to pray on this. Mighty Father, I should have word I will hear tonight. Let spiritually take me to the next level. Next level. Next level. Spiritually. Next level. 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 My fire. My power. Next level. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Let's thank God tonight. 
the word I will hear, let it have a change in my life. Many men be in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away, all things have become new. Let your word change me tonight. Let's begin. Let pray. your word I will hear tonight change me, but this will change and transform change my change, life. Change, 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 we give you the grace to live for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let your world give you the grace to live just for you and not for anyone. Let's begin to pray. I pray tonight, oh God, the word that we hear tonight, man to perish in that. We give you the grace to live for you and you will alone. Man that call your son, they never seen the name in Kendalia. Man tell you, I dear, can de 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 de. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The word that we hear tonight, oh God, let the word of God settle me. Let the word of the living God settle me. Let's begin to pray. I pray tonight, oh God, your word that we hear tonight, will settle me. I ask for settlement tonight. Father, settle me. 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 Amen. Father, we thank you. Bless you. We give you all the praise, we honor. We have been our prayers unto you, Lord. Grant our request in Jesus' name. We are praying regarding what we want your word to do in our lives. Let your word begin to walk a great walk according to your way in Amen. our lives and destinies in Amen. Jesus' name. My Father, we declare and decree we are growing stronger in you. We are doing your will. We are living a holy life. My Father, we are obeying you. We are even we are studying your word the more. Lord, we declare we receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Begin to Glorify yourself in our lives mm -hmm. and let us do things that will be pleasing unto you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Amen. We give all the praise Amen. in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Once again, welcome to Bible study online, interactive Bible study where we interact together. Bible says, Iron sharpened iron. That's why we are interacting together. That's why we can see your comments on both Facebook and YouTube. So make sure you make a comment. You know, very soon we have question time. Maybe you are reading your Bible, or maybe you are you are you tuned in. You saw something on social media, or tuned to Christian radio or TV, or you are to some some friends, or just some just pop up to you while you are just walking. You know what? When the time comes, we have question time. But before then, go to somebody. But before then, also if you have a question, you can begin to post in your questions both on YouTube or Facebook. We we'll pick it up on any of the platforms and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone in the name of the Lord. Yes. This evening the reading we're taking from Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 from verses 3 to 12. Matthew 5, 3 to 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit for this is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are they that Blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall reproach you and persecute you and say all oh, manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be extremely glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Hallelujah. You know, we have been talking about the beautitudes. The beautitudes in that passage and God will bless you. But before we go into that, if you have uh, before we go into that, we'll do summary so you can begin to post in your questions and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's the summary from verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, yes. for there is the kingdom of God. The Bible is saying that fortunate is anyone, blessed is anyone that is poor in the spirit, and to be poor in the spirit means you are hungry for more. You are saying, Lord, I want more of you. You are not saying, I have arrived. That is, you. every day you want to learn more from God. You want to receive more from God. That is, there will be a fasting and a hunger from God. And the Bible says, for this is the kingdom of heaven. You want the kingdom of heaven to happen in your life? 
Then be hungry for God, be thirsty for God. You know, never say, oh, I've arrived. No, all of us must keep running, must keep chasing after God and the grace to chase after God, to run after God, to be hungry for God. May God give it to us in the name of Jesus. And not going to work his wonders and miracles, even every life and destiny. That is telling us that many people in spirit of God said we need to yearn for more, desire for more, hunger for more, thirst for more. That is, you need to be going to continue going to church participate in things of god you know what you hunger for more you want more you are always in every program for example now you are in bible study you know saying that bible study is for children it's for but it's for everyone you want to learn you, you are yearning to know god the more because through the word of god you can know god the more that's why the word of god is very very important so it's only those who are poor in spirit who know that definitely you know what i need to know more i hunger for god i thirst for god i want to go to church i want to serve god i want to do his will i want to follow him i want to be holy then you know what that means that we are, we are poor in spirit and you want to yearn and know god the more that grace that will give to us in the name of jesus yes. you are not finished oh, that's why i'm repeating what you said i'm just mm. precising so we have even done the other part last week you know we are doing some summary so we said blessed are the poor so god will give us that grace to be poor in spirit and remain poor in spirit so that we can move ahead by the grace and by the power of god in the things of god amen mm -hmm. so that's where we stopped now if you have any questions maybe you are reading your bible maybe you are talking to some friends you know what it's question time and i believe that the lord works wonders and miracles even in every life and destiny in Jesus' name. So, as I said before, you are reading your Bible, you came up and uh, read the verse or chapter, you need more explanation, or maybe you are um, talking to some friends, you know, sometimes we talk to friends, or maybe you, are, um, um, you saw something on Christian radio or TV, or something on social media, you want some information, let's do that. You we'll post your questions either on Facebook or YouTube, you can pick it up, and God will bless, increase, and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Amen. Questions mm -hmm. show that we are growing, we want to learn more, and I believe that those who are poor in spirit are the ones who want to know more and they have questions. So throw in your questions, and God will bless you, and God will increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen, amen. So while we are waiting for your questions, I think I have a question I want to ask, I was supposed to ask last week, I couldn't ask around. I have a question I want to ask, um, and as I'm asking, maybe if you have a question, you can even throw in your questions. You know, just, uh, there's a word that is in Christendom today that is growing and is rampant in Christendom today, and I want us to talk about it for more clarification and explanation. When somebody is ministering, or somebody is preaching, or, or singing songs, there's a word that some person is, I tap into it, I tap into it. That is, they are tapping into that power and so that they can do what that person is doing. Now, is it possible for a Christian to tap into the anointing of somebody else just like that? You stand afar and you say, I tap into it, I key into it, it is mine. The same God is using that person, I too, I key into it, I tap into it, God will use me that way. Is that a right um, thinking, right way a Christian should think? And is that how to 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 aspire for the power of God, or is that how easy it is that you tap in and then whatever that man or woman God carries you to carry it almost instantly? Is that a right way of? of because I hear people saying it a lot. I tap into, I tap it, I tap. Even online, a man of God, I tap into, I tap, I tap. So is it a, a woman of God that I tap into it? And so is that a right thing to say? And God will bless us all in Jesus' name. While well, we are waiting for your response. Yes, anybody can say I tap into, if anybody can tap into any anointing, but the issue is, are you willing to go through what that person has been through? Because anointing does not just come by confessing or by desiring or tapping into it or by tapping. Anointing will work by living a life of sacrifice. Are you willing to pay the price? If you want to pay the price, why not? You can tap into any anointing as long as you can want to, as long as you're able to pay the price. Anointing is for everybody. So, if you can sacrifice, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can pay the price. Yeah, that's the word. You can pay the price. Why not? So, is tapping into it a right word to use for Christians? That's the question. Well, it's, I would say it's just a language, but it's, but it goes. It's more than just tapping. 
Because it's just that when you are in school, you tap the pen. It's more than just tapping the pen. Someone said to repeat the question. The question is, I think you are asking your own question. The question is that there is a language that Christian uses today. A lot of Christians are like tapping. They see a man of God, woman of God, that God is using mightily, or a singer singing, and because maybe they're in that area, or even online, you say, I tap into it, I touch, I tap into that, and so, tapping into it, meaning that they too, they want to flow and move the same way the man or woman of God is flowing, or the same way that minister is flowing in songs, and say, I tap into it, I tap into it, and after that, they believe that they too carry the same power that that person is carrying. Is that possible? Is that is that how it works in Christian dumb? I've even seen people not on our program, other programs whereby uh, the man of God, woman of God will be, and they say, I tap into it, I tap that power, that anointing is mine, and receive it by fire. You understand? So is that uh, is that is it is, is that an is that the way that people can be anointed in the kingdom? That is the question. So I think you understand the question now. And Pastor gave some examples that it's not that's not the way. So but we need to understand, and you know sometimes. Christendom, we have languages that people bring in and we need to talk about. I remember in those days when people wanted to talk about, when people talk about um, uh, speaking in tongues, they call it kabash and kabashi, a kabash on it, and it will flow, it moved for a long time. Kabash is not in the Bible, and people just use words to, and I don't know, maybe to make it easy for people to understand, and it went for a long time until after a while it died down. And now I see that people are using, I hear people using that word tap, I tap into it. Tap into it, I tap into it. So may God help us in just. So what's your reaction or what is your thought on that? Everybody. For those who are just joining while we are waiting, mm. anybody can say I tap into anointing. It's like saying, Oh, I am the head and not the tail. Of course, it is the will of God for us to be the head and not the tail. Mm. But are you doing what will make you be the head and never the tail? So at the end of the day, anybody can say, I tap into I tap into this great anointing. Are you willing to do what that fellow is doing? That is the question. So I believe and that's the answer. So I believe that I'm waiting for people to make their clear their reaction to and let us hear what you think before we say that. So, oh, <coughs> sister, I think I said, oh, okay. I don't think the anointing can be transferred that way. As one needs to walk the walk and pay the price. Of course, there is transfer of anointing too. But as you see, it's in another way. Transfer of anointing, yes. For instance, if you are under a ministry and anointing is friendly, it has a particular anointing in that ministry, I believe yes. For instance, it's that big girl. I notice one thing. You are beginning to preach the way I pray, the way I pray. That means you are actually flowing in my anointing gradually. So it is possible as long as you are willing to do what you need to do. But most of the time, people are not willing to do anything. They are just confessing. Hey, I convert it. I tap into it. I receive it. But that does not mean they will receive it because if you are not, if somebody is not doing what they are supposed to do, nothing will happen. You say, oh, I tap me to Pastor Fung, that's anointing, no. <laughs> one of, was it two days ago, I was, I, I was going through one of my old books and I will see three days praying and fasting. I will see seven days praying and fasting. And I said, I said, you this girl, do you even eat at all? And somebody will say, oh, I want your anointing. Are you willing to put away your food? So, every time we say I tap me to somebody's anointing, are we actually willing to do what that person is doing? Because to get to be anointed, you must pay the price. It doesn't just come cheaply by just confessing it. Oh, I receive it by fire, by faith. It's more than that. The one I'm asking this question is that many people believe it's, yeah. it's an easy way out. You understand? It's not an easy way out. You tapping into whatever anybody is doing does not automatically mean that you carry what they will carry. The example that Pastor gave is that somebody is under her and she's she's rubbing off on the person, which is possible. Just like um, um, Paul and 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 Timothy, or, or Elijah and Elisha, or Moses or and Joshua. So sometimes when you are close, you are close in contact, you rub off. Things rub off. Yes, things rub off. We can say that. But I'm talking about tapping into it that. That person, God is using him or her mightily, and say, I tap into it. I too, by tomorrow, I too, I will be, I will be doing what they are doing. I don't believe that Christianity works that way. If you want to tap into anything, you need to know what that person is doing. You need to pay the price. Tapping into it doesn't mean that automatically the whole anointing comes on you. 
you have to pay the price you have to see god for yourself is that what even what god wants for you that way the man or woman of god is ministry is that what god wants for you You need to know your calling to know if it aligns with what that person is doing or if god has something else for you so i believe that we need some kind of spirit to know what we are tapping into so that god will help us in your tapping into does not automatically mean that the god many people have been frustrated by they are tapping tapping and things are not happening why because it doesn't work by tapping in you understand we need to pay the price and god will give us that grace in the name of jesus before we begin to read the comments in addition we need to know your stream that is it that is know your stream if you don't know your stream you are tapping into everything maybe not be messed up you must know your stream. Know where God and know no you need to know the call of God on your life. For instance, now I can't follow some people until Jesus will come. Because that's not my stream. So you need to know which stream is your stream. And when you locate your stream, you follow that stream, you follow that man or woman of God. Will I say diligently? That is, you say, okay, for okay, for instance, now you can't say, Oh, I have. 50 preachers I listen to, and for 50 days, you listen to one, 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 one each day. You're not likely to really get up there. There must be somebody you are following. That is, there must be an anointing that you say, oh, I look, God, I like this one, though. Because many times you don't even know what we want initially. But as you begin to draw closer to God, you begin to see what God wants you to do. You begin to dream about you, then God begins to show you vision, and then you begin to know who to follow, because you can't just follow everybody. You need to know your calling. Yeah. The calling will now determine who you can follow and who you can and God will show you the way. You understand? Everybody has the way that God will deal with them. The same way God did not deal with the, Moses the same way he dealt with uh, in um, Joshua. They not deal with Elijah the same way dealt with Elisha. You understand? They not deal with David the same way we dealt with Solomon. So God deals with people individually, not as a group. Not as tappers. Okay, all these people are tapping into this messenger A. Okay, let me deal with them the same way. No, God does not work that way. God works on individual. And whatever assignment God has for you, that is what you need to follow. You need to know, follow, and then what you can do, as I said, you can find people in that area that God has assigned to you and then begin to hear them, listen to them, and you follow them so that at least you know what price they paid to get there. And you also... If you are willing and obedient, you can pay that price and then you will get there. But anointing doesn't come on anyone just by tapping in. You see somebody on the screen, you tap in. Somebody preaching in church, you tap him. Somebody in a conference you went to, you tap in and you're tapping in around that. It doesn't work that way. We must be willing and obedient so that we can eat the good of the land. May God help us in Jesus' name. Somebody is the saying that. Says, yes, you can if you if you if if it's God's will for you and if you are willing to do the work that God then there. Faith without works is dead. Mm, I personally agree with that one, which you cannot tap into. You need to know what God has for you and then follow it. And you also need to pay the price by yourself. You understand? Because you say faith by faith without work. I mean that somebody who taps in by faith to receive that anointing, but it doesn't work that way. One of the ways by which anointing can be transferred is through laying on of hands, not by tapping. There's no way in the Bible talking about tapping. Paul told Timothy that. Uh, reactivate the gift of God in you that was given to you by the laying on of hands or by the elders. So, laying on of hands, we know that um, uh, um, Moses laid hands on um, 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 Moses, Joshua, um, um, Elijah, on Elisha, and so on and so forth. So, there's transference of power and anointing like that. But they too were willing to obey and do what those people did and they keyed into it all the while when moses went up there you know joshua was in midpoint he was there waiting and waiting he did not go until moses came and he now followed moses so he paid the price. disciples too they were with jesus they left all what they were doing and they followed jesus and they learned from him where he slept as he woke up what he did and that you know that relationship they were able to key into what Jesus had, not by tapping. Somebody cannot be, somebody cannot be uh, <clears throat> in Africa and tapping to somebody in America and say, I'm tapping in like that, I'm tapping in, by laying on the fence and say, I'm tapping in. It doesn't work that way. You need to pay the price and know what they did so that you also can do it and move forward. Because people are getting, you know, everybody think that once they tap in, the same anointing should come over them, that that man or woman of God carries. It doesn't work that way. And then in addition, Pastor, if somebody has been listening to you and for, 
to an anointed person for a long time, for quite a while. The anointing on that fellow is likely to rub on you, even without laying off hands. Yes, I know, yes, people can lay hands, but there are moments that because you've been following a preacher that is anointed for a long time, with time, the anointing on that man or woman of God will begin to rub on you, especially with this social media. I'm not talking about people who are just you not know, playing. No, and I mean real servants of God that carries the anointing. Truly, when you listen to them for quite a while, if you listen to them to a point with time, you begin to operate the way they are operating as long as you are willing to pay the price and with the guidance of the Holy Ghost. So it's not just only when somebody will lay hands, even no, I'm with... I'm method. I'm not saying that's the only name of pastor. Method. One of the ways. One of the ways. Okay. One of the ways. Mm -hmm. There's a great man of God here, Apostle Samuel Olutoye, a very great man of God, very powerful man of God from Nigeria. He says, in time of deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. And if the anointing of that man you tap from is an occultist, then you will carry an occultism anointing. It is an error to tap. You have to work out your own salvation with fear. And that's what I'm trying to pass across because Christians of today, they love that word tap. And they think that because they are tapping, they, are, they can be in sin and say they want to tap and they want to tap and they want to move in that anointing. It doesn't work that way. We need to be very careful. So I, to me personally, this is my own personal opinion, I don't think Christians should be in that word tap. As the great man of God said, our father in the Lord said, uh, Apostle Samuel, he said that it is an error to tap. You have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And that's what I believe that Christians need to do. Because some people go to meetings, they want to tap. They are tapping here, they are tapping there, they are tapping there. And believe that because they are tapping, what happens? The anointing should come on them. And they, get, they are disappointed because they don't flow into what they have tapped into. It doesn't work that way. And also, as our father said, it's very, also very dangerous because there are many people who are using strength powers now. And you need to know where you go and make God help us in Jesus' name. That's why we say people should be very careful. Yes, I know. That's who yes. they follow, whoever will follow, will determine what follows you. Mm. May we not follow an occultic person. Yes, sir. If you have enough the sounding of spirit, you follow the right people, and then you are able to pay the price. Because you say God works in diverse ways, and God looks at the heart. Then I would believe people that say, I type, I type, I type. If you have somebody who is really, really into God and they are really, really serious, you will only actually you only use the word I tap. Because you know that you are not tapping into anything. All you are saying, Lord, I want, yes, I convert this anointing. And you ask yourself, what do I do to flow in this way? And then the Holy Ghost, the Bible says it gives to all as it wills. Once we are willing, we are willing to pay the price, then the anointing will come upon our lives. Amen. Somebody says here, which I love. He said the energy to follow is Christ and not man. This is also very important. So may God help us in Jesus' name that we understand this. We have the word of God there. The word of God, the Bible is ye and amen. And I believe that everything that anyone needs or wants is also in the word of God. As long as we can follow the word of God into two, you understand? I believe that the power of God will flow in that life. But we have people who have gone ahead, who have tried it, and who have proven in that area. You can, you can at least listen to them and know what you can do but the main thing is that you have a role to play you have a part to play that's what i'm trying to bring up from this question you have a role to play you have a part to play in getting anointed and doing the work of the lord and savior jesus christ it doesn't just come by tapping it it comes by you paying the price you living a holy life you doing the will of god you spending time with god in prayers you reading the word of god and you know, making it on his word day and night, then the power and the grace of God will come mightily. And may God help us in Jesus' name. That statement, the anointing to follow Christ is not a man. To an extent, yes. But there's another side to it. By the time you look at what Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Yes. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. He says, you are to imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Because then, if care is not taken, we'll say that because um, 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 then, then there will be nothing like mental. If people coming behind cannot, of course, Jesus is the ultimate. We look at Jesus, but at the end of the day, on this, on this act, there are people that, as born again Christians, we can imitate. As what Brother Paul says, imitate me as I'm an imitator of Christ. If not, that be nothing like mentoring. Then everybody will say, you know what? I have the Bible. Let me just follow the Bible by myself. And then, then there will be no Paul. There will be no Timothy. Pastor, 
mentoring is mentoring. Somebody who's mentored, you know, I'm tapping into. Somebody who's, men, who's been mentored will be humble, will learn from that person. We are talking about people who just come from nowhere and begin to tap into. Of course, that's what we call mentoring. That's why I mentioned Paul and Timothy, Elijah and Elisha. That is mentoring. They, they stood or sat under those people we mentioned mm -hmm. and they, they caught their relation and they disrupt of them and you know what they are doing exploits yeah so even when those people went when they meant when their mentors left and went to sleep in the lord they continue they the continue walk. the work why because they were under them the bible talks about elisha there was the school of the prophet and how do you know that that place was too small for them and said elisha let us expand so their school of prophets whereby the prophet the main prophet would impart into people that's how Paul did. We Paul had a lot of people working on him. He imparted into them and spoke with them and sent them. Timothy go there, Tatus go there, Clenon go there, this go there, Onus go there. So he had people who were working with him that they were going all over the place and they were all under Paul. So that is copra. Those people did not tap into it. They were there and they were being mentored. But I'm talking about people who just come from nowhere. Ah, that announcing, I tap into it. No, I'm just, I'm just word. actually, I'm talking about the mm, last thing because said. at the end of the day, we have to balance everything. Yes. Just as we have it in the Bible, we have Apostle Paul, we have Timothy. So also in our world of today, yes. we have Pastor Benny, we have Catherine Kuma, we have Bishop Oyedepo, we, we have Bishop Abioye. So for every generation, of there's course, always a man, there's always a servant of God that somebody else will say, oh, this man is serving God. Let me follow this man too. Even though Jesus is the ultimate. The good example you gave, like Bishop Abiyoye, did not stay afar and tap into. No, we are not yeah. saying that they stay afar. No. That they is, they, they too, we pay. If, like, if you're talking about Pastor Benny and, 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 and Mrs. Ko and Mrs. Kuma, Pastor Benny paid the price, he's paying the price too. So when we are talking about people coming into the kingdom saying, you know what, the anointing on this life, I love it. They must be willing to pay the price and they must be willing to submit under a pastor. Because we have to be very careful. You know, people tell you, oh, I have my own Bible. I am my own pastor. I have my own everything. I don't, I don't have to listen to anybody. No. We still have to submit under somebody. Because mm -hmm. there is a Timothy and there is a Paul and there is a Timothy. Somebody says, yeah, is it okay to tap into prophecies and prayers given to others' rights? Is it it's it is in this context that I have actually heard of the word tapping. And when a prophecy is given to somebody, can you tap into that prophecy? I believe that every individual has a prophetic word from God. You understand? But when it, you know, prophecy, sometimes prophecy can be for one person or can be for everybody. Now, when it comes to the one for everybody, you can receive that word that is being said. For example, now, okay, you woman, you are believing God for a baby. Understand? Receive your baby, and you, somebody, someone is there, as 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 had their babies, and they are going to grab, and they cannot tap into it or say, "I claim it." Why? Because it doesn't apply to them. So when it's applicable to every individual, I believe that we can receive that word. But when it's for that individual, sometimes it's for that individual, somebody says, "Okay, your husband receive your husband," and a woman is married. That woman will not say, "I tap into it," because she's married already. You understand? Or say, "I receive it," because that woman is married already. She can receive it for her own children. For the, the daughter she have she has so that they can get married and uh, find husband yes but for herself she cannot say oh, it depends on what the prophecy is or what the word is or what the word of God is if it's applicable to you of course if you can receive it if it's not understand the people who need it will receive it and that's why we need to be careful so that we don't become conversions somebody somebody bought a jeep and the next thing and you have just bought a, a let's say another car that's not a jeep. Oh, I tap into that. And you just bought your own car a week ago. That's covetousness. So that's why we need to be very careful. And actually, all this issue of I'm tapping, I'm tapping. We yes. need to be careful what we are tapping into. Exactly. They will not tap into evil in Jesus' name. That's why we need to be careful. And I think in our world of today, there are so many languages that is fine. Okay, like now when somebody will sing so well, they say, wow, you killed the song. But people of old will never say, Oh, you killed the song. No, they will never say that. So at the end of the day, at times, I think from generation to generation, at times the language could be like now, if you if else, let's say 30 years ago, when somebody is ministering and somebody actually is saying, Ah, Lord, 
use me this way. They will not use a tap. Mm -hmm. They will have their own language that they will use. But the children of nowadays, when they see anybody that God is using, the next thing is I tap into it. So may God help us to use your tap is not an uh, it's not an easy way, it's not a way out, it's not a Christian word, so we need to may God help us in Jesus' name. So I have another question on board. It says says I came across this question on YouTube. Is Jesus God? Also John World one says, In the beginning was the world and the world was with God and the world was God. In Genesis one, the Bible says, Let us create man. In our own image, if you notice, is us. You see that thing. Well, I won't say that thing. That that concept. It takes grace to understand it, because Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. People will say, "How come there are three in one?" Even Jesus said, "My Father and myself, we are one." So you know, people will be saying, "Look, when you say God, when you say Jesus, when you say the Holy Spirit, you say three in one. How come? Yes, the three are one, but they function in it." They function differently. Sorry, I uh, sorry, I was reading another question. So, um, Jesus, God the Father, yeah. God the Son, yeah. and God the Holy Ghost, and they have different functions, but they are one. And I think I've made this analogy before that um, an ice block, an ice block. In an ice block, you have the ice, you have the water, and you have the three. I forgot in the third one. You have the ice, you have the water. And you have the forgotten, but the three is still is all still water. You understand? And that's how Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is. You understand? Or the Son. Let me use the Son. Yeah, the Son is the, the easiest sun. one. The Son is the easiest one. You have the body of the Son. You understand? And then you have the light yes. of the Son, and then you have the effects, it's, the heat of the Son. Now, mm -hmm. the body of the Son can represent God. Now, the light that emits that lets us know the Son is there. Mm. Is Jesus Christ? Is it came as light, and then the heat we feel Holy is Ghost. the Holy Ghost. They are all sun. Sun. I'm talking about the sun that is in the sky now. S U N. S U N. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Ghost. The three are one. John says in John chapter one, verse five seven. I think. Let me read it. If this is King James, yes, it says that. And also in um, Philippians two nine. I read that also. Let me first read first John, first John. 1 John 5, 7, I believe. 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three witnesses, the, for there are three that hear, that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are what? Are one. That's 1 John 5, 7. And you only find that in King James Version. Other versions have changed it, but you only find that in King James Version. The three are one. And then Philippians 2, now let me read that for you. No, I, I saw a question like that on, uh, was it on, on one of the groups I'm in and somebody was saying, uh, Jesus is God, is not God, and they were arguing and you understand. So I understand where that question is coming from. Philippians 2, Philippians 2, let me read, I think from 9, no, let me read Philippians 2. When said God has highly exalted Yes. Him. It will be Philippians 2 from 9. From 9, that's what I'm looking for. But there's a place I want, yeah. Maybe past 7 or but, 8. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. I uh -huh, yeah. Oh, yes. Verse 6 says, Who being in the... This is just... Let me read from verse 5. You can just, just talking about um, Philippians 2, 5. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 6. Who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, so he did not say uh, he is equal, but he just said again in John chapter. I've forgotten John. I and the Father are one. My Father is working. I, I too, I am working still. Yes. So we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. But in any organization, there's always the head. So God is the head. You understand? We have God who is the head, but we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and they work hand in hand. They all have different functions. In the beginning, in the Old Testament. God the Father ruled. He ruled. And you know, if you met, if anybody messes up like this, it's death. Jesus now came and he ruled for, let's say, three and a half, because he was here for 30, 33 years, but his, his ministry was three and a half years. And after that, the Holy Ghost came. And up to now, the Holy Ghost is still ruling. So we have, we have God the Father, God the Son. God the, if you ask me that question, is God just God? Yes, Jesus is God also. Because God could not come down in the spiritual form. If he came down, everybody would die. So you have to 
humble in himself the, in, the physical form. in the physical form sorry in the physical form because nobody will see him and if, the time he came down when he, when the Israelites were in the wilderness the earth was the mountains were quickly and they were afraid I said Moses we don't want this go and meet this God when you meet him whatever he tells you come because they were so afraid that God came down and God realized that he cannot come down like that. so he had to take the form of man to come down to die for you and I to realize what you and I are going through as man and he suffered the whole thing he went through the whole thing as man and he died on the cross and in the end is now seated at the right hand of God where he was before so Jesus is God I would say that Jesus is God and that's where people don't understand the concept of Jesus being God yeah Jesus is God even though he's still subject to God but Jesus is God because there has to be a head Ahead and the Jesus said that the Holy Ghost will not come of his will, he will speak about things concerning me. That's just talking, so that's why you see the Holy Ghost is really now. But mostly, when the Holy Ghost talks, it's about Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, I believe that mm, I believe that that will help us in the name of Jesus. So, that answers the question. Tobias has another question which I want to read. Um, let me see if it's here. Let me see if it's here. Um, it's not here. Okay. Um, the person says, Judges chapter 20 from 28. This is the third time Israelites ask the Lord, should we go and fight against our relatives from Benjamin, uh, from, the, from Benjamin again, or should we stop? And the Lord told them, go tomorrow. I will hand them over into your hand. And they went, and yet Benjamin still defeated them. Numbers 3.19 said the Lord, God is not a man that he should lie. Why did God disappoint Israelites? God did not disappoint Israelites. If you read that part of the Bible very, very, very well, it says the first time they went, they fasted and sought the Lord and did that, and God said they should go. They came back again, and... They failed, God, Benjamin beat them. Then they went again and they cried for morning to night and they sought the Lord and God says, go again. And second that they went and they lost battle. But the third time, they now realized their mistake. Offering. They did not do any offering or sacrifice. <laughs> Understand? And that's one thing about God. Sometimes people say, it's not, it's not necessary. And if I have a request, I don't need to sue a seat. Sometimes you need to. And this is a good example of that. That the third time they realized their mistakes. Mm -hmm. They were fasting, you listen, know, they were fasting, they sought the Lord, God said yes, but they failed to do what they were supposed to do. The third time they now remember, ah, we didn't do sacrifice to God. So they offered sacrifice, God in the Bible very well. It says they offered sacrifice to God the third time, and God said, Go, and then they conquered their enemies. Yeah. What was lacking in the fourth and second sacrifice? They cried, yes. They fasted, yes. They were in the presence of God, yes. They sought the Lord, yes. God said, yes, yes. But something was missing. The sacrifice. And many times, God will not come down to tell you what you are supposed to do because it's already written in the law. That was what a good example is Uzzah. Uzzah and the Ark of Covenant. It's already in the law how the Ark should be moved. And what needs to be done now they did not check the law to see how the act should be moved and they put the act act on the cart and began to ride it uh, a, 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 a cow was put a bull was put in and he stumbled and Uzzah put out his hand and God slid him there why because he did not follow the rules because after that that David went to read the rules and they got the priest they put the poles in the act and they carried it and each step they were doing sacrifice because they now read the law. Sometimes we need to know the word of God. We need to know what we need to do when it comes to certain things in God. Because we cannot just assume the first time they went, second time they went, and they lost. They lost a lot of people, and that was wasted life because they failed to realize their error. So God is not man that you should lie. And that's why even in our world of today, God can tell you, go, do this, do that. But have you done what you're supposed to do that will appease God? Have you done that? Somebody cannot be living an unholy life and say, I want to do this, and say that God will back him or her. No, we need to do what you're supposed to do, whether sacrifice, whether being holy, whether there are some principles we need to follow. And once you, follow, for example, now, tithe is a good example. Somebody wants to be blessed and they want to be booked to the Bible, and somebody is praying, Lord, I'll be the Bible. The Vara does not is not being rebooked by prayer. There's one thing, there's only one way you can rebook the Vara.
too tight. Now, if somebody doesn't know and they are praying against the vara, they may say, I've got to start by prayer, by faith. But you know what? Go, nothing can happen. Why? Because the only way you can rebuke the devourer is by being faithful in your tithing. So, there are some principles in the Bible. And these people failed to follow that principle. And that's why they suffered the way they suffered. They lost lives and they were defeated. Why? Because what they were supposed to do, they failed to do it. That's why as children of God, we need to know that God is God. Yes, yes He will tell us what to do, but it's not going to force us yes, how to do whatever we need to do. Mm. And Funny enough, God is just God. That's why Psalm 115 verse 3 says that he is God, he is in heaven, and he does what pleases him. A good example is um, Zachariah and um, Mary. When the angel went to Mary, oh, that was highly favored, blah, 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 you, that, you, you will be pregnant. The woman said, Mary said, how would this be? This be? When you know, don't have a man. And the angel said, Oh, the angel of oh, the glory of the Lord will overshadow you. And you know, say, Ah, don't worry, Mary, oh, it will be okay. And then the priest, Zachariah, believing God for a baby, the angel came and said, Ah, look, oh, I've had your, heaven has had your prayer, oh, and you know what? You are going to have a baby. And the man said, How would this be? Heaven responded in another form. Eh? You're asking me, how would it be? For the fact that you did not, you are asking me, hmm. you are going to be dumb for the rest of the, uh, 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 until the baby is given birth to. Hmm. So, funny enough, we, we have to say, but uh, somebody asks, how would it be? The other one asks, how would it be? How come they did not get the same answer? Psalm 115 verse 3. God is in heaven and he does what pleases him. That's why we should be praying, Lord, we should be praying that, Lord, let mercy, let compassion, let grace locate, locate my life. And I believe that God has a higher responsibility from Zachariah because he has been a priest for a long time. He knows his God. You should know his God by now. Whatever word comes out from the mouth of God is yea and amen. So he was questioning that word, and I think that's why he was punished. Unlike there is Mary, innocent person. I'm, that's my own take on it. My father said it's mercy and grace. Yes, it's mercy and grace. But also, because Jesus said something that those who know what they were, they, those who know and they did the wrong we, we get a severe beating and those who do not know and did the wrong we get a light but that's what you just said so i be that responsibility also carries a play, play a, a role in zachariah and many but in the end it's still the grace of god and the mercy of god that's why the message to whom much is given much, much is required expected. yes so may god help us in jesus name so i think that answers all the questions <coughs> and i believe that we have all been blessed in the name of Jesus, and God will help us and uphold us. I cannot see any of that question, so God will help us. So let's go into what we have today, and God will bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And thanks for your questions, everybody. God will bless you, increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously. You know, we do appreciate your contribution, your comments, and everyone. God will bless, increase and prosper you in the name of Jesus. Now, today we are still moving on. Um, Verse 3, it says of Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the poor in spirit. I think we've done that. I believe we've done that. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Before we even deliberate on that, a question came to my heart on this. It said, For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Of course, we know there's a kingdom of heaven. Now, the question is that as Christians, or how do you understand this word? What is there a difference? If there is, what is the difference? What is the difference between, and can someone write that down for me, please? The difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Because sometimes Jesus will use kingdom of God, so he use kingdom of heaven. In this area, he used the kingdom of heaven. So, and I believe that there should be a difference because he, not, he, he didn't use kingdom of God in all instances. He didn't use kingdom of heaven in all instances. There are some places he will use kingdom of heaven. There are places he will use kingdom of God. So, what is the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, if there's any difference? And how do you understand both the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God? How do you understand that word? I'm saying before we're waiting, mm. kingdom of heaven is, I would say, the domain that we are supposed to enjoy as believers. Mm -hmm. The late Mas Moroz, um, he did a good job on the kingdom. Uh, if somebody is from the Buckingham, from Buckingham Palace, mm -hmm. that's the way they behave, that's what they enjoy. And so also as children of God, as children of God, as we are in the kingdom of God, when we say 
um, kingdom of heaven, that is, there are some things we are supposed to be enjoying, there is a way we are supposed to live our lives, there are some, see, that is, that is a, how will I put it now, there, when we say kingdom of heaven, that is the way things need to be done in the kingdom. And then the kingdom of God, I would say that's the way God operates. Even though they go hand in hand, there's a thin line between each. Mm. So what is the kingdom of heaven? Because I've given the expression, kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. <coughs> what is the value that that the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God? I said, in here is used the kingdom of heaven. If I can see where the kingdom of God is used, just to make examples, and that we can understand that really, truly, truly, God, Jesus mentions the kingdom of heaven, and then he mentions the kingdom of God. So we need to understand that if there's no difference, then they would have interpreted it the same way. Interpreted it the same way. So use the kingdom, kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, survival, violence, violence will take it by ah, force. Ah. Matthew 11, 12. Mm. From the day of John the Baptist up till now, the kingdom of God, survival, violence, violence will take it by force. Mm. So how do you understand that? How do you understand this kingdom, kingdom of, of heaven passes. and kingdom of, of God? Mm-hmm. I want to see which one Pastor said. Mm. That's Matthew 11, 12. That one is the kingdom of heaven, Pastor. Is it? Uh, and it says 12. And from the time, on the days of John the Baptist, that's Matthew 11, 12. On the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent takes it by force. So there is also the kingdom of heaven that is used there. But there's a the place wherever I use the kingdom of God. In this, um, I Googled it now. Kingdom of God was used in the New Testament, sorry, was used, uh, actually occurred mm. 68 times, while um, the kingdom of heaven occurred 32 times. So where are the places that give us examples so that we can read it? Uh, so what is the difference between, so somebody said maybe the kingdom of God is God's kingdom on earth. <laughs> so where's the kingdom of heaven? Because we need to know <coughs> what the difference is. And I believe one is a place, while one is mm. a kingdom, and that's that's my own take on it. One, because I've, I've uh, I didn't write down the place where kingdom of when I when that question came to me two weeks ago when we were, when I was reading it, I said, hold on, but I saw kingdom of heaven here. What that means that the, the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God because Jesus used the word kingdom of God, and I'm trying to see. I think Pastor will come up where he used kingdom yeah, of God. Actually, the two phrases kingdom of God. May, uh, and when we say kingdom of God, yes, that is where God, that is where God is, what He does, he everything, where yeah, He reigns. And then kingdom of kingdom of heaven. At the end of the day, they are they are, they are the same thing. Because if we are trying to differentiate, it, it, it will be a very thin line. Kingdom of heaven is a place. You understand? A place. For example, I am going. I am coming to another kingdom. It's a kingdom. Another kingdom. Now, who is the head of another kingdom? The queen is the head of United Kingdom. So, who is the head of God's kingdom? God is the head of God's kingdom. So, when we say God's kingdom, God's kingdom is mm. the authority in the kingdom of heaven. You understand? So, God's kingdom is, I believe, is the government of God's kingdom or in the in heaven. You understand? The government, like when we read Revelation chapter 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 three, I think, where they worship God, God's kingdom. That's God's kingdom seated on the throne and you have 24 elders you have the four living creatures you have elders you have all the angels bowing down so when the 24 elders remove their crown and all that so that is God's kingdom that's how his kingdom is set up and his kingdom where God reigns is called heaven so that's the kingdom of heaven that's my own take on it I didn't read anything about that when reading other places in the Bible about the kingdom of God you know God is is God's kingdom where we are all going but the place it's called the kingdom of heaven. So we sometimes people say the kingdom of let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the will of the government of God. Let it be done here on earth. Mm. And that's why the Bible says that I see another Jerusalem coming down from heaven and this and that in Revelation chapter 21, I believe. So the kingdom of heaven, I believe, is a place whereby we are all going. But the kingdom of God is God's government over the kingdom of heaven. Well, according to Bible commentary, mm. what did say? it says in each instance, Matthew used the phrase kingdom of heaven. Mm. They gave us different, uh-huh. like when they are saying the same story, it says 
in each instance, Matthew used the phrase kingdom of heaven, while Mark or Luke used kingdom of God. Oh. Clearly, the two phrases refer to the same thing. Because if you look at the stories, and they give us the examples, Matthew 11, 11, 12, with Luke 7, 28, they are saying the same thing. One, uh, Matthew used kingdom of God. heaven, the other one used kingdom, kingdom of God. God. There's another one, Matthew 13, 11, they used kingdom of heaven, <coughs> then the other one, Mark, Mark 4, 11, used kingdom of God. So they interchange it. So at the end of the day, they say the phrase is the same thing. Because you cannot separate kingdom separate of God from, from kingdom of heaven. So kingdom it's of still heaven, the same, same thing. Same thing. So when we say kingdom of heaven is a place that we are all going. When we say kingdom of God, I believe, is the governing authority of God over the kingdom of heaven. It's the same place because that kingdom of God rules over the kingdom of heaven, where we are all going. And that's why the Bible says here that for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That is, they are all going to heaven. That's the kingdom that we will all be and the head of the kingdom. For example, you and uh, UK is a very good example. We are all in UK. We are all citizens of UK. Some people are citizens of UK. You understand? Under UK. But the sovereign of UK is the queen. She's the head. So it's like the queen's kingdom and it's called United Kingdom. So God's kingdom, where he reigns, is called heaven, I believe, because it's heaven. God is in heaven and it does what pleases him. So it's in heaven and the kingdom of God is in heaven. So that's the kingdom of God. It's government and then the kingdom, kingdom of heaven, I believe, is a place we are all going to. That's why I had some passages in the Bible. I did not write it down when I was thinking about it. There are some examples here. Mm. It says, for example, speaking to the rich young ruler, mm. Christ uses kingdom of heaven mm. and kingdom of God interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you mm. the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Matthew 19, 23. In the very next verse, mm. Christ proclaims again, I tell you, it is here for a coming to go through the earth and you than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. God. So even Jesus himself, he used those two words interchange and those two phrases interchangeably. So at the end of the day, he's talking about the same thing. Of course, the same thing. What which verse which um chapter is that in Matthew? That's Matthew. I can read it here. Matthew 19, 23. Matthew 19, 23. And then Matthew, the same Matthew 19, verse 24. That's the next verse. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jesus said to him, that I could very very say unto you that, that a rich man shall that a rich man shall shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's the kingdom. Again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. God. So enter the kingdom of God, enter into the kingdom of heaven, almost the same thing. Kingdom of God is his kingdom and heaven is where it is. And that's why even when Mark and Luke, mm. when they were writing. Even though they are writing the same story, they use it interchangeably. Like right? they will say, Mark, we use kingdom of heaven. And Luke, we use kingdom of God. And it says the two phrases refer to the same thing. Somebody says kingdom of heaven, also called kingdom of kingdom of God, in Christianity, the spiritual realm where, where God reigns as king, or the fulfillment on earth of God's will. As God's will be done here on earth. So we can use interchangeably. We just something that just keep hold on. Kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Is there a difference? Kingdom of God is God's dominion, and kingdom of heaven is where God reigns. It's the same thing. We have a head. So when we're talking about God as the head, it's kingdom of God. We're talking about the place. It's kingdom of heaven. And may God give us the grace to reign with Him on the last day. That is the most important thing. Whether kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven, we need to make sure that we reign with Jesus on the last day. That is the most important thing. And may God help us in the name of Jesus. Thanks for those who are going to be there to it. And God will bless everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. So I think that answered you. Or you want to say something before you no, go to no, no. So he said that for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So does it mean that a condition to enter heaven is to be poor in the spirit? Yes. Does it mean that the condition, one of the conditions yeah. to enter heaven is to be, because it says here, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, does it mean that to be part and parcel of the other kingdom of heaven, or for the kingdom of heaven to be yours, you have to be poor in spirit? How does both correlate together? How does it work hand in hand? That is, poor in spirit, and theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How do you understand? How does it correlate together? 
Well, a lot of people are preparing mm. their answers. Mm. And it just came to my head. The arrogant shall not make heaven. Mm. <laughs> the Bible says God looks at the proud from afar. Far. Mm. So we can say that the prerequisite of getting to heaven is by being poor in the spirit. Like we said, who is poor in the spirit? People that are humble, that are willing to learn. So the arrogant, oh, they are going to hellfire. Hmm. Even the Bible says that God himself, and that's why Lucifer, he said, oh, let me become like God now. Hmm. He said, hey, you, hmm. you arrogant thing. You want to overthrow God. And that's how the guy, I mean, that's how he was sent to earth. Hmm. He was banished from heaven. But kicked out. So kicked out. So that hmm. means... The arrogant who are not going anywhere. Of and do you know today we are very proud, arrogant Christians. Christians mm. People that are full of themselves. Mm. They can't learn from anybody. People think they are too much. They only think they know everything. Mm. May we not go to hell fire. Amen. 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 So it means that anyone who is arrogant, who is full of themselves, who doesn't want to learn, who believes they know all, is, they are treading on dangerous ground. Why? Because they may not enter heaven unless they repent and turn around unless they repent and turn around that's why you see it's very important because i believe to mm. enter the kingdom of god is one of the prerequisites is that you be poor in spirit because we don't want somebody to get god doesn't want somebody to come to heaven and we say god move i want to sit down it's yeah. never possible <laughs> i'm just giving an example <laughs> well, just giving an example god move i want to sit down you know somebody who's arrogant. that's what the devil did now say god move and he didn't even say God move. When he said mm. his, his chair above the chair of God, so God will be under him. And God said, Not possible. And that is why he was kicked out of heaven. So the arrogant, the proud, those who are full of themselves, mm. will not enter the kingdom of heaven except they are, they will say they repent. I said they repent. Now, let me ask this question. You want to say something before we go? No, actually, I just want to give some verses in the Bible about. Pride, proud people. About people who are arrogant, mm. who are proud, who are proud, who are full of pride. And you know, in the kingdom of God today, man again, Christians, I'm sorry, can I use the word cocky? Mm. <laughs> so, man again, they are so full of themselves that they think everyone, every other person is a sinner. Mm. Nobody is going to heaven. They are the only one that will make heaven know. Mm. Let's see what the Bible says about proud people. May we not be proud in Jesus' Amen. name. Proverbs 11 verse 2 says, When pride comes, mm. then comes disgrace. Mm. But with the humble is wisdom. Yes, sir. Proverbs 29, Proverbs 29 23 says, Proverbs 29 23 says, Once pride will bring him low. Mm. But who is lowly spirit we obtain honor. Yes, sir. Proverbs 16 18 says, Pride goes before destruction. Mm. Oh. Mm. I like this one. Proverbs 8.13 The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil are perfect speech and acts. Mm. Mm. So you see that everyone who is proud. Now let me add this question. Why do people become proud? Mm -hmm. Even Christians. Why do people exhibit the traits of pride when God hates mm. pride? You know, that is what made the mm. devil to fall, pride. So why do Christians, and Christians know this, so if Christians know this, why would they still exhibit pride? Why would they allow mm. pride to take over them and believe that they are better off than others? Why mm. as Christians? Why, why? why? God, let's be real, there are some Christians who are, who are full of themselves. Nobody can talk when they're talking. So mm. people, even, even as a man of God, when they're careful, I've had, Man, man of God, say, some people, some people saying that okay, if that person is on the same platform, I'm going to preach. Jesus. I am not coming. Or if you don't give me this day to come and preach in your program, I am not coming. You understand? Mm -hmm. People give different. Or I am coming to preach. These are my conditions. If you don't fulfill my conditions, then I am not coming at all. Such and such. So why do people? I'm not saying those are full of. I'm just giving examples of what happens in the kingdom. So why are people? Christians, Christians, full of pride. When they know that pride goes before a destruction. And when they know that pride is one thing that God hates, He looks on the proud from afar. 
God, because you, there's another person that says that even the prayer of a proud person is an abomination, abomination to, to God. God. So it's hey. an abomination to God. So Jesus. God doesn't even hear their prayer. So, and with all this Bible quotation and all things that is in the Bible, why do people still. Boy, I just read this Proverbs 16 5. Mm. Everyone who is arrogant in his heart mm. is an abomination to the Lord. That is it. Too. Be assured. It will not go unpunished. That's it. That's it. So why are some Christians, I'm talking about Christians now, still full of pride when all these things are in the Bible? Why do you think some people are still full of pride that once they do this, they're doing that? You know, and pride can come in different ways. Even unknowingly, pride can come. I call that fake humility. Pride can come in different <laughs> ways. For example, to me, so this is to me, or this is my own opinion. You are going to a place where a guest minister, you tell them, I'm sitting in this office until my time comes. They are worshipping God, they are praising God, they are doing the Bible, they are reading the Bible, and say, so until you come. And when you now get there, you start all over again because mm -hmm. your time has come. You see, sometimes one needs to be careful. Or you go to a place and they are praising and worshipping God, and you sit down and you cross your leg. You understand? So, you know, unknowingly, people do it and they don't know. But so maybe. Sorry, finish. So annoyingly, yeah, So maybe we should give examples of pride. Because give examples. if we give, that's why I let everybody give what is, if we say, oh, you're a proud person. Mm. Why do we say you're a proud person? What mm. do we see? Because mm. normally we say, ah, oh, this one, mm. arrogance in our own. So, so what are the traits so, of a proud so person? So what are the, what, when we say somebody is proud, what are the examples then we can now say, why what are people it? proud? Mm. Of course, so what are the bits? What, what are the um, what are the traits that a proud person? Or examples, examples of examples of of someone of a Christian of a Christian not someone of a Christian being proud. I was saying number one, whoever will look down on anybody. Others. The Bible says whoever will belittle his, his neighbor, neighbor has no sense. sense. It's Lacks in Proverbs. So. Yeah, so it's Lacks not sense. my word. Mm. It's the Bible says mm. whoever will belittle his neighbor has Lacks no sense. sense. Mm. You know some people the moment they see somebody. They will look at the person head to toe and say, What's she wearing? Uh -huh. Primark, that's not the Primark t shirts. Mm. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Bricks in market slippers. And then. East Street hat. East, East Street hat blouse. East, East Street blouse. <laughs> and then the powder is from Bricks in market. This one, I beg, come out for road. That's a sign of, of a course. proud person. They will look at somebody, they will judge them by the way they look, by what they, by what they wear, or whatever. That's them. That is, you know, people will just look down. To others and look down. They try to better themselves than others. They, so they wash at times, down. At times they're not even. Mm. Mr. Nobody. Mm. Mrs. Nobody. Who knows tomorrow? Who knows tomorrow? That's why you see one is to. So, what are the traces or examples of someone? Who is full of pride? What are the examples of someone who is full of pride? Okay, Sister Omi, she's answering the first one. That, mm. Why are people proud? Maybe it's their evil family. <laughs> then maybe it's their evil family pattern, or the enemy wants to use pride to destroy the individual, which is very true. Mm. If we are to go by the first question, of why are people proud? It could be and get check and check this out. If you see somebody that is arrogant. Go and check the, their family. They are full of cocky, arrogant people mm. that will look down on everybody. And it can be a way that the enemy wants to destroy a person. May we not be destroyed in Jesus' name. Mm. Somebody says looking down on others or feeling that they are the only one that can carry out a particular task. Yes. Basically feeling on top of others. Very That's true. Really true. When well, you think you are better off than others. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that don't think... Uh, think of others better off than you. That's what the Bible says. Think yeah. of others better off than you. That's what the Bible and says. And esteem others. Than you, than yourself. And that is the way by which you can quench pride. That is, if you esteem others better mm. than you, you see that, okay, they're calling you to come and do something. See it as a grace, not as thinking that you are better off than others. It's just a grace that you carry. And let's see it as a grace. You know, we said last week that 
Everything we have or we have been given is given mm. from above. Mm. So it is with the grace of God. Mm. By grace we have been saved, lest anyone should boast. So that is the main thing. So I that, love Bible. So that may God help us and deliver us in Jesus' name. Galatians 6 3 says, mm. Galatians 6 3 says, if, for if anyone thinks it's something, mm, when it's nothing, when it's nothing, mm, it deceives it himself. himself. Mm. And like that, people will say, empty barrel makes make the, the most, most noise. noise. Mm. 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 Which is true. Which is true. Mm. You know that empty barrel thing, one day I, I had to experiment it. I had a container, a, a metal container full of something and one empty. And when I hit the one empty that fell on the floor, make noise, boo, 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 boo. and when I Put the one that was full and had mm. when it fell, you don't, you don't even know it fell, and that's why they say empty barrels makes the most noise, and that's why you see, you know, careful, you see, whatever you have, whatever you own, is given to you by the grace of God. It's not that because God sees you and you're worth it. And People it are to not you. making comment, <laughs> so, why are you not making comments? So, what now? are the examples either in YouTube or other <laughs> examples of pride, also, no comment, also, please make mm. comments. Let's examine. So that, the Bible says we should examine ourselves, ourselves. daily mm. whether we are still in the faith. Do you know somebody can be proud and they might not know that they are that arrogant? Is that is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. That Maybe is it. this Bible study will help somebody today. Because mm. there are many arrogant I, people I, in church. I know somebody that say carry somebody. No, I can't carry that person in my car. Sorry, that person don't work on my car. That is that's a form of pride. You understand? Pride comes in different ways. It was sometimes in a subtle way. That, for example, the usher will say, sit next to the person. Ah, I can't sit next to the person. Sorry, let me move and sit somewhere. That's pride also. So there are little, little subtle ways of that pride keeps in that you are not, that if you're not careful, you will not realize it's pride. But before God, it's pride. That's why be very careful. Another example in church is, do you know some people, it is only when the pastor is leading mm. prayer mm. or anything that they will participate. That is it too. I remember a church we used to go to many years ago. There is this brother. The moment a woman will pick the mic, mm. this man will go outside the church. Mm. And it's eh, a woman talking where I'm talking. Mm. That is pride. Um, um, Pastor Bonke of Blessed Memory said, if a man is drowning in the river, somebody is drowning, and it is a woman that has got a jacket, life with the man life. say, I mean life jacket, with the man say, no, no, let me drown, because it is a woman holding the jacket. May pride not kill somebody. Amen. When somebody is too proud, when it is, they will only receive when it is only pastor that a pastor that is officiating. Any other person will say, "Me, that one." When did that one come? And that one will be leading prayer, and I will be saying, "Amen." No way! Hmm. It is only when the pastor and when they get on board, and, hey, then I can participate. May we not kill ourselves? Amen. Amen. That's why you see. This prayer talking about comes in in subtle ways. Different ways. That's why we must be very, very, very careful of what we are doing, our acts, because God looks in the heart, mm. not mm. not mm. not mm. on the answer. Mm. He sees our heart. Mm. He sees mm. if our heart is full of pride or humility. But today we are telling us that let us be full of humility so that we can inherit the kingdom of heaven. We mm. can get to the kingdom of heaven and reign with God in His kingdom. Very, very important because. Anyone who is full of pride will not get there. Anyone, let me repeat, anyone who is full of pride will not get to his kingdom. May God help us and deliver us. And may pride, you know, pride can take over people. May pride Anybody. Not take over us. So people in, in a prayer gathering, when everybody is praying, they're not saying amen, they're, they're even looking away. It is when they want, the one who want to pray, hand, they say, okay, everybody say amen. Now they, they are now full of energy because it's their time to pray. That's pride. Because anybody can pray. And God answers anyone's prayer as long as they are doing His will, He will answer. So God does not grade it as that. And may God deliver us in Jesus' name. I love what First Peter five five says. First Peter five five says, likewise, you who are younger, mm. be subject to the elders. Yes, Clothe yourselves, all of you, mm. with humility Minity. towards one another. Mm. For God opposes the proud. But give grace to the humble. Mm. James 4 10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord and He will exalt you. Yes, so, how about also getting on top of the place of power and acting mm. like you no longer recognize the people you grew up with? Of course, that's so, why that's why thinking that you have arrived. For example, now somebody, two people goes to sing in a place. Let me say, preaching. Two people go to sing in a place. As one is coming, they're clapping. The clap is one, two, three. And another one is coming, 
uh, to sing again, the clap is 10 times. Now, if the person they mm. clap for 10 times is yes. not careful, pride may creep in. Just as the Pharisee and the publican that went to pray, the Pharisee prayed, the Lord, I thank you for my life. I fast twice a day, I pay my tithes, I attend church regularly, I do this and do that. And the Bible says that's how he prayed. But the other one prayed, he not, but he not even look up, he was being in church, Lord, have mercy upon me. I know I'm a sinner, have mercy. And just as who went home justified? It is the other one that prayed and humbled himself. You cannot be telling God and be quoting what you have done before God mm. as, as, a, as a right. Mm. Now, Lord, because I have done this then, therefore you have to answer. Lord, because they have clapped for me, therefore it means that I am on top. Nope. You know, the Bible says something very scary. It's not the man that man commends oh, yes. that is acceptable, but it's the man that God commends. Let's be seeking for the commendation of God and not the commendation of man. Because yeah. man can make an individual fall. The same people they can even deceive you. The same people that say, Ah, Jesus, you are the king. When they enter Jerusalem, the king has come, King Jesus. And they put their clothing on the floor and went to get palm trees and they and they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. They were the same people that turned and said, Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him on that day. So you see, you cannot depend on man. Try to depend on God because man can make people for you know sometimes even sometimes church causes people to be full of pride the way they act the way they 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 honor them the way when they man clap is for them praising you <laughs> well, say it. don't kill me <laughs> give when, the glory to god when man is praising you and you're taking that praise look at um king, king herod. herod the next 12 yes king herod you must say that they were praising him oh the voice of a god oh great king and the person he took the praise and instantly the angel of god slid him there that his body began to decay at that spot can you imagine because of pride so pride is a very dangerous thing. Mm. That is why you say that blessed are the poor in spirit. Nobody knows it all. Nobody has it all. May God deliver us in, Je in, in the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians 10, Second Corinthians 10, yes. 17 to 18 says, Let the one who boasts, mm. boast in the Lord. Lord yes, sir. But it's not the one who commends himself, uh, yes, who is approved. Yes, sir. But the one whom the Lord commends. Mm. And do you know, in Christendom today, we are waiting for people's accolades. That is a do. That is a what do. are you saying mm. about me? What are you saying about me? When people are not saying mm. something about people, mm. people are angry. angry. People are upset. It shouldn't be. Let your praise be from heaven. I've seen people whereby they are introducing them, they introduce them very well. They say, that person don't introduce them. Let me introduce myself, myself. You understand? It doesn't matter. At least you, you are not there for yourself. You are there to represent Christ, so introduce Christ. No matter hey. which way they introduce you, it doesn't matter. That makes no difference. I know some people are so so particular about introduction. Get Give them an accolade. Especially if, for example, somebody is a bishop and they Tell call them a oh, pastor. My ah, biography. Tell them. Say, Sorry, I am not a pastor. I can't even remember when last I was a pastor. I'm a bishop. You know, all these things. It's not the name. It's not all these things. And you know that I said that this thing creeps in. Somebody is praying on YouTube and say that, May we not be destroyed by, by pride in the name of Jesus, which is true. We may not be destroyed by pride because people are destroyed by pride. Pride is something that makes people fall. And, and pride creeps in in a very subtle way. It will not come in a way whereby it will come in a subtle way and bit by bit. The moment you are thinking you are somebody, that is the beginning of pride. Yeah. The moment you are thinking you are somebody, I have arrived. The, the moment you are thinking that without me, this thing cannot go on. Ah, that is that is the first step. And um, lesson one o one, lesson one o one to pride. That's mm. step one o one to pride. When you think you are the only one, <coughs> you think that without me they cannot start. Mm. They dare not start until I come. Mm. That is when pride begins to come in. Mm. I've seen many instances where <coughs> some men of God, or women, people want to come to church and people will prostrate, they will sit down, you don't do that. They say, why are you not in Just as that was what happened to Haman and Mordecai. Mm. Haman, Mordecai saw Haman not bowing down to him and he got annoyed and went to destroy the whole thing. In the end, he destroyed himself. May we not be full of pride. May pride not destroy us. We need, that's a prayer we need to be praying as Christians. Lord, mm. don't let pride get hold of me. Let me remain humble. And Lord, you are so my peace. question is, how can we overcome pride? Because I've realized that when people are nothing, have you ever seen, even though okay. there are some very poor people that are very arrogant, oh, some people 
I'm sorry to use the word that they have not achieved nothing. Mm. They can be as arrogant as anything. And as some people, when they haven't achieved so much, mm. they can be very humble. That is the but the moment they achieve it, just uh. one little thing like that, nobody can talk to them again. Mm. They become too big for even anybody to address. Mm. They will say, is that me you are talking to? Is that the pastor is talking to like that? Mm. Forgetting that when you came to the ministry with only one trousers and only mm. one mm. shirt. Mm. No, no, seriously. The pastor, you, you wouldn't say anything wrong the way the pastor is addressing you. Mm. But now you've got a great job, a good job. Now nice. you are so settled. God has answered your prayers. You and a then car, you live in a good house. Is, is it me? Is it me they are calling like that? Really? Mm. May God help us all. Somebody says. Yes, I agree. A whole church can exhibit pride when they hold their doctrine above the word of God or consider theirs the only righteous one. And those of other churches are not, are not despite it being biblically based. Of course, it's, everyone is common mm, in this common. in in this world. You know, there are some people from some denominations. They be they believe that eh, I, I'm not mentioning anybody's name now. They believe that any other person that does not belong to their church oh. is not born again. Mm. Says who? Mm. When Jesus will come, there will be surprises. Some people once you don't belong to their clique, you don't belong to their church, mm. you don't you know they will say no 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 you are not born again. You're not a Christian. You are not a Christian. There's even some people that they don't use Christianity anymore. They use the name of their church as salvation. And all these things are not, if you're not part of that church, then you're not saved. You're only saved if you are part of that church and they call themselves a name. I don't want to mention any name, but I'm just talking. And that's why that is a very correct one. When the church now lifts itself above the word of God, thinking mm. they are the authority in Christendom, thinking that if we don't do things the way they say it should be, it should be done, then they are going to hell fire. They are not doing the will of God. No church has its all. God uses people different. Look at Peter and Paul. We mm. have the Bible as a good example. Peter was sent to the circumcision party and Paul was sent to the uncircumcised. The Gentiles. The Gentiles. And they did exploits in each of their work. Mm. And they did not and they did not they did not turn they did not degrade each other. You never let that Paul degraded Peter or Peter degraded Paul. They realize what God has called them to do yeah. and they face it and they did it with all their strength. They're just walking for the kingdom. Working for the kingdom. That was their motive, that was their thought, mm -hmm. that was their thing. Working for the kingdom. And I believe that mm -hmm. churches of today, no matter how big or how small you are, we need to that we are working for the kingdom, not for the church. Many people are working for the church and not for the kingdom. We need to work for the kingdom and not for the church. And may God deliver us and help us in the name Sister of Jesus. Sister Mopi says, 1 Corinthians 10, 10 12. 12. Mm. So, if you think you are standing, standing. firm, mm. be careful. Lest you fall. So that you don't yes. fall. Mm. Let him who thinks stands mm. take heed lest he fall. That's what the Bible says. Let him who thinks he stands. People think they are standing. Take heed lest he falls. And may God deliver us in Jesus. Because let me tell you, it's very easy to fall. If, care, if you don't put the gas in place, if you don't put the gas in place, you don't put the gas in For example, now, you have arrived and you think you have arrived and mm. nobody can correct you, nobody can talk to you, nobody mm. can say, ah, hey, what you said, oh, please, oh, then, you are, then that means that pride is coming in. Or mm. how you did it to, you know, some people in some establishment, they are, they are, mm. their employers cannot even talk to them. They, can, they, they are not. And moved. then they will fire them eventually. Eventually, why? Because they, are, they fire they are, them. And they, they are not, or they are not agreeing with their ideology, and they are questioning their authority. Even Jesus, they question his authority too. So, if man questions authority, sometimes it's good in a way for you to pause and say, Ah, maybe what that person is saying is true. Maybe they did wrong. Go. Maybe they did wrong. Go. Maybe I need to correct myself. Maybe that's God speaking to me. God, God speaks in different ways. I mean, look at look at that's uh, the 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 wife of Neman and Neman. The small girl was the one that spoke to the madam, and the madam spoke to Neman, and Neman went there, and that's how Neman caught his 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 cleansing and was cleansed. Who would think that a small girl, but a little girl, mm -hmm. a little girl that was taken from Israel and was waiting on the master, mm -hmm. on the on the mistress, or no, on the madam of the house, and then. Because the madam, I believe, was good, had good rapport, the girl was able to tell the woman that if your husband goes, he shall be cleansed and was cleansed. Who knows? God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. God can use a small person, a big person to come to you to correct you so that you don't err in mm -hmm. what you are doing. That's why all errors must be open. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. And if you notice that story, in Second Kings, Neman mm -hmm. 
the Syrian army commander, commander mm. nearly missed it. Yes, sir. Yes, he went to the man of God, mm. said, Go and wash in river Jordan. Yes, he said, Hey, me. To go and wash in river Shiluam. When we have river papayas, mm. we have river this. The people around him said, Sir, mm. this man did not tell you something that is difficult to. All he said is, Go deep inside yourself. the deep yourself. And the man said, It's true. Mm. And the Bible says, He dipped himself the seventh time and he came back as a baby. So that means we should not be arrogant because God can use anybody for anyone. Don't mm. think you are too much. That, oh, this one, mm, this one. Mm. No from, one knows. I know, from the story that Pastor, mm, the, that example we just gave now, do you know, I just learned something. It means that her man and the wife were good people. They could listen. Neman. Neman, Neman, sorry, Neman and the wife were good people. They were people who listened. If that commander of the army was so tough that nobody could talk to him, he would have missed his blessing. Yes. If Madame also was so tough that nobody could approach her, he would have, Neman would have died a leper. Mm -hmm. But because the wife was good and a good listener, they was humble. They are humble people. Humble, they are humble people because you can see that trace in the both of them. And that's why humble people, you know what? They get the information and you know what? God preserves mm -hmm. them. But mm -hmm. people are full of pride. Even when somebody is full of pride and they see, like for example, in some countries, like in my beautiful country, when the gate man sees, hears something and the boss is not approachable, we keep it, what's my business? But when the gate man hears something or the, the someone mm -hmm. hears something and the boss is good to them, what would they Quickly they will go and meet the boss. Oh God, there's danger, don't go out tomorrow. This so and so have planned. And it is as they have had. Why? Because they are approachable. What are we saying? Be approachable in everything you are doing. Because being approachable is a sign of humility. That people are able to approach you and talk to you in whatever capacity you may Maybe to an extent. To an extent I don't know. Some so, people, of you can approach them, but they are very, very prideful. I'm saying that. Whatever being, you are saying, they say, okay. When they are asking, that that you must be approachable. People must be able to approach just as Neman's wife yeah. and Neman himself. We must be approachable. Have that spirit whereby you are approachable. And then be humble. Be humble. That's it. Once you are humble, you'll be approachable. At, at least in some cases, once you are humble, we will be able to approach you and talk to you. Mm -hmm. We 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 carry no power. It's the grace of God mm -hmm. has given us whatever we are. And you God has taken us where we are. God deliver us so I have name. a question. How can we overcome pride? Mm. None of us can be saying, oh, well, but you'll be shocked. Everybody has got a bit of pride in mm. them in one way or the other. It's just God that is helping everybody. So how can everybody again Christian overcome pride? From all the verses we have been reading, we know mm. that whoever is arrogant, the prideful, we, that person is not going anywhere. Mm. So as a born again Christian, as a child of God, how can we, we overcome, overcome pride? pride? That is the question. How can we overcome pride? One of the ways, I already said that. Please, people are not responding. One of the ways, because we need to run, one of the ways is that um, one needs to handle themselves under the power and the hand of God. There's a person that said that um, humble yourselves in the hands of God so that it will exalt. So we need to humble ourselves in the presence of God and tell God to give us the spirit of humility. That's one way I think we can get rid of this pride. And Lord, give me the spirit of humility. Mm -hmm. I believe that God will do that. And then I will say, every believer must go to God. The Bible says we need to examine ourselves daily. daily. We go to God and say, Father, extray me. Mm -hmm. points to me. Like tonight when we are going to bed, everybody should pray. Lord, extreme me. Mm. Is there pride in my life in any way? Mm. And do you know if we are very sincere about it, the Holy Ghost will tell us that. Of course, mm, so. You, in this mm. area. And because it could be little things yes. that we are not even aware mm. of. So, it's, I would say, yes, that like Stephanie said, self-examination and prayer. Yes, so. You examine yourself. Because at times somebody can even have what we call fake humility. Of course, yes. So. But again, Christian, you know, we have all our, we have our first mask. Mm. God, I need your help. Yes, I really sir. want to please you. Please, extreme me. Mm. And you know, I think we need to be doing that occasionally. Lord, extreme me. What am I doing that is ugly in the sight of mm. God? What am I doing that is going to send me to hellfire? Mm. Help me, reveal it to me, and, and deliver me. And when God will reveal it, we must say, ah, mm, Holy Ghost, 
You are not talking to me, oh. Mm. Maybe that's my neighbor. Mm. No. Take it to a mother and say, Lord, I need your help. Yes, sir. Take it to God in prayers. And I'm sure God will fix us. Mm. So I said, take it to God and be willing to change also. Yes. It's not only taking it to God, you must be willing to change. Yeah. When God tells you, this is the way you are yeah. wrong, you are right, do this, do that. We need to obey that which the yeah. Lord is telling us. <coughs> the first one is taking it to God in prayer and admitting. Yes. When God speaks to you, admit. Yes. And also, also, people also, people all around you can give you hints. The way they talk to you, the way they rapport with you, can give you hints that, ah, Lord, if I'm not a good communicator, Lord, change me. Is it pride, Lord? Break the pride out of me mm. and let me become a good communicator. If I'm somebody that is not approachable, Lord, break me that so I can mm. be approachable. You know, there are some things that we can see and know and then we can pray the prayer that, Lord, mm. help me, help me, help me so that, you know, even, and that's why it's very important. Mm. Just that, who do men see that I am? So we need to know who we are in God so that we can change when mm. we need to change. So I, said, I think we need to go deeper in the word of God and have fear of God always. That is, yes, we allow the word of God that we are reading yes, to change our change lives. Yes. That is, we don't just read the Bible as a religious person. Mm. When somebody is reading <coughs> the Bible as a religious person, mm. the Bible says, that person is like somebody who beholds themselves in the mirror yes, and the moment they leave the mirror, they, they cannot say, this is how I look. That mm. means, that is, we must be hearers, and do us readers of, like, sorry, and hearers, do readers, and doers of God's word. Because as we are hearing, as we are reading, we are meditating, we are studying, we must live what we are hearing. We shouldn't play church. Mm. Because if anybody is not living what they are saying, then they have become like the Pharisees. Yes. The Bible says the Pharisees, they are like a whitewashed tomb. Have you seen a tomb before? It's so beautiful on the outside, but on the inside it's full of maggots, insects, and dead bones. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Yes. When one is proud, nobody can approach them, of course. By hearing and practicing the word of God. On yeah. It, yes. When you hear and practice the word of God, then pride will be exhibited, yeah. will, be, will be exited out of that life. Will be extinguished. Will be extinguished out of that. We must pray very well because mm. every human being has the traces of pride. It's only God that is helping everybody. God, that's why we need to pray and hand over our thinking place, our thoughts to God mm -hmm. so that He can destroy, the Holy Ghost so that He can destroy the pride in everyone of us so that we can be free and be free and do the will of God. So God will help us today. Thanks for mm -hmm. those who have uh, made comments. Thank we appreciate you. you. God will bless you and prosper you. We do appreciate you. But we end today there. Uh, just one prayer point. That Lord, remove from me. Let me use the word of God. Every dot and iota of pride. Every spot and speck of pride. Every element of pride in me, Lord, remove it for my life and destroy the good people of Jesus. Come and follow the fire after the living God. Remove every spirit of pride, every act of pride, every act of pride, every element of pride. Knowingly or knowingly in my life, oh God, in this family, let the Holy Ghost fire consume it right now. Even in the church of God, we don't want to be proud, to be proud, oh God. Help us, oh God, to have to humble ourselves before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you, O oh God, because you are the mighty God, you yes. are the great God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for correcting us again tonight. Yes, Lord. Lord, take the glory, take the honor, take the adoration. Yes. Lord, we bring ourselves before you anyway, in any form. We are falling below expectation. Let the blood of Jesus begin to cleanse us. Father, we will pray tonight every spirit of pride in any life, in our life, in any way, in any form, in the church. Let the blood of Jesus begin to cleanse us, O oh God. Amen. The grace and the anointing and the power to humble ourselves before God, so that God can exalt us by himself. We receive that grace even tonight in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. Yes. We give you the honor. Yes. Jesus, mighty name of God. Amen. Quickly, if you're out there, if you're giving your life to Christ, you need to give your life to Christ. And if you want to do that, God bless you. Just follow us as we talk, as we say, as we confess, and God will come into you, and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved of God, the greatest miracle is to be saved. Yes. If you are not saved out there, you need to humble yourself before mm. God and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You want to be saved, just say this in prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, come before, I you. come before you. I am a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive, me my, Forgive sins. my sins. Wash me with Forgive your blood. blood. I, accept I accept you as my Lord and, Lord and Savior. Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have just said a prayer, for you have just been born again, your name has just been written in the last book of now. Get yourself a Bible, get into a living church where you can be taught the word of God, and God will bless you even like never before. In Jesus' name. Amen. And that's our address on the screen. You can join us Fridays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. And God will bless you. Jesus, quickly, we want to give a round of our programs. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Every Wednesday that you have Bible study, join us at 7 p.m. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. And please don't forget on air, my cry. Oh, God, every day we come on 6 a.m. in the morning. Every Monday night, 10 p.m. UK time. And every Wednesday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And at the moment, we have a special prayer going on. On hear my cry, mm. oh God. You know, hear my cry. Tomorrow will be four. We'll be we'll be we'll be going into a new year. Amen. We'll be stepping into the fourth year. So tonight, twelve midnight, just for half an hour, we'll be having hear my cry, oh God. If you can join, join. It all depends on you, and God will bless everyone in Jesus' name. And then prophetic hour every Tuesday at nine p.m. Join us at Mountain of Prayers tomorrow. At, at, at uh, 9 p.m. join and I tell you, life shall never remain the same again. And then our monthly program on Air My Cry, the first seven days of the month, from 1st through to the 7th, we'll pray for the power of the Holy Ghost, for fresh yes. infilling, for fresh fire. Join us 6 a.m. every morning and God will bless us all in Jesus' name. And the third Friday of every month, which is this Friday, we have Holy, uh, we have Holy Ghost 9 BG 12 midnight. Join us, I tell you, life shall never remain the same. For Holy Ghost night with you. God bless you this Friday. Amen. And by the grace of God on the air, my cry, oh God, the last three days of every month, the last three days of every month, we have three days praying and fasting every month. So join us and God will bless every one of us as we are joining in Jesus' name. And the last day of the month, we have what we call Gregor Explain the question of our debut. Join us 11 for the five for 30 minutes as we cross over into the new month. And this one will be the 31st of July, which is a Sunday. Join us and God will bless, increase, and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's the address of the um, the YouTube channel on the screen. Please subscribe to that channel if you haven't. And as you subscribe, don't forget to press the little notification button so that you will never miss any of our broadcasts ever again. God bless you. I can see new people join us on YouTube. Please subscribe. We are 2.14. Our target for this end of this month is 2.20. So, the subscribers, so please, if you are new, I can see new people there, please subscribe before you go and God will bless you and prosper you. Our uh, target is 220 for the end of this month and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And don't forget those who are on Facebook, please like it, love it, follow it, and share it. <coughs> and God will bless you and prosper you. And also the page, also like the page. Yeah. When you press like now, you're liking the program. This program we are doing, Bible study, we're liking it. But when you leave and you go out, you like the page itself, Body of Christ Center. Like it and follow it, and God will bless, increase, and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. And we are also taking the opportunity to invite you to church. That is the address, and God will bless, increase, and prosper you mightily. Sundays at 10 a.m., Fridays, I said this Friday at 7 p.m., and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And before we go, ask God, what do you want Jesus mm. to do for you? Let's pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you because we thank you. We have made our presence. You grant our request. Amen. Have your way. Amen. We shall testify. Amen. And your name shall be glorified. Amen. There shall be signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining. God bless you. We do appreciate you. You are blessed and highly favored. Amen. And God will bless you. Jesus. Amen. Okay, Pastor is coming to me now tonight. Let's join. And then tomorrow morning again, 6 a.m. And then we have mountain moving prayers at... Um, at what time? at 12 at 9 o'clock and please don't forget i want you to wish my lovely wife pastor funke tomorrow's her birthday so make sure you one way or another either on facebook or whichever means messenger wish her happy birthday and god will bless increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously you know and i'm wishing you a happy birthday thank you many, many happy returns and god bless so amen amen thank you very much god bless you all we appreciate you we are blessed and highly favored <laughs> Shall we share the grace and fellowship? Yes. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thanks for joining. God bless you. Have a nice night. Bless you.